Yeah. All right. Hello, you guys, and welcome to another episode of the Big Money Science Podcast. It is so freaking cold today. <laughs> like, it started out sunny, and then all of a sudden I was like, okay, I'm bringing out my, my winter parka. Yeah. And <laughs> it was like 65 and sunny, and then it, like, got cloudy and yeah, cold. Yeah, I underestimated wild. today. Yeah, same. For I sure. think we all did. Well, I have a special guest here. I was going to say here in the house, but <laughs> here in the podcast studio. This is Austin. I can't even remember your last name. I just blanked. So my new last name is Greer. Austin Greer. Yes. It used to be Felder, but then I got married when and I moved married? a year ago. Oh, okay. Yeah. We're new. We're fresh. I felt like your Instagram changed or something yes, changed. It and did. So then I was like, I don't know your last name anymore, <laughs> so I'm just going to ask. So. Yep. It's Greer. Well, welcome here. You were in our, you. our one of our classes today. Um, I just ate a bar, and I feel like I have chocolate <laughs> in my teeth, but... I think it's I'm okay. I, I'm I think I'm I have to blow my nose. So <laughs> it's fine. We'll have all the we're, sound. All the things. <laughs> but we're we're here. We're excited to have you. Um, and I love kind of interviewing some of my students that I feel like I know you through. Don't you feel like you know people through social media? Absolutely. But I also there's a lot of uh, students inside the community, and I I'm like. I feel like I'm like that 90 year old lady that can't remember everybody's stories or names, and I'm like, yeah, I know you, but it's yeah. just it's expanding, which is amazing. It really is. But I just I really love like reconnecting with the artists and finding out more about you. Even though, like I said, I follow mm-hmm. you on social media, but I don't know your story. So tell us where you're from and kind of how you found came about um, with MBR and how you decided to join the education. Yeah, I would love to. So I am originally from Louisiana, okay. small town in Louisiana, and. About a year and a half ago, I relocated to San Antonio, Texas, because that's where my husband's from. But I was just a regular old, like, small-town stylist. Um, COVID hit, and I wasn't even interested in doing extensions, to be honest. Oh, really? No. I was just kind of, like, going along with the girls at my salon. Just kind of like a hobby, like, kind of fun. Yeah, mm. we were, I mean, I was just, well, at the time, I thought I was making good money, Mm. and the girls I worked with, which they were phenomenal. They're still mm-hmm. really good friends of mine. Um, they were interested in doing extensions. And oh, okay. I was like, sure, I'll do whatever. We paid for this class. We all came here together. And I was like, oh, my gosh, I am hooked. When was it? What class did you It do? was November of 2020. Okay. Well, oh, was it one of our small, like when we were doing yes, it, a bunch it was of like the first. W- it was like one of the first. Okay. <laughs> I remember was, that. And I remember like Did I teach it? Yes, you okay. and another yeah. coach and um and then other coaches were also training. Mm. So we had like five of y'all. It felt oh, cool. so cool. Um but yeah, I remember like doing the pre-training and just being like super overwhelmed with the things that you were telling <laughs> like, sorry. us. Like you can charge this much for mm. extensions and we're like not in our small town mm. and it just felt so like out of our realm. Mm. And then we came, y'all talked about Academy, mm-hmm. and I was like, oh, I'm freaking going all the way. Like, pedal to the metal, I am doing this. Signed up for the Academy. Within my first year, I doubled my income. Oh, wow, nice. I remember sending Were you a still screenshot. in the small? You yeah. were still in the cave. Oh, yeah, still in the small town. Um, doubled my income within the first year. And then my second year, I went MBR exclusive. Mm-hmm. I knew I was going to be moving, so it helped me kind of drop off other clients. Yeah. Um, really like niche down and then once I moved I had like all of these tools in my tool belt Mm -hmm. to set up a successful business and it's just been like drastically changed I it's crazy because like I love hearing that because I that's the biggest thing I hear you know people see my lifestyle now and they're like well I you know I live in a small town or whatever and I'm like you guys I started in a small town. you can do it I'm like you really can so how did you like change your mindset to like like, was it, like, slowly giving yourself permission? What, like, how did you do that in a small town where, you know, you first take the class and you're, like, mind's blown and you're, like, who am I to charge this? <laughs> like, how did you make that shift? I was almost just, like, ignorance is bliss. Mm. And, like, I just ran with it. Mm. I was, like, you know what? They made it happen. I can make it happen. And a lot of stylists, I feel, like, deal with, um, like, emotional connections with our clients Mm -hmm. in not a positive way so it's like you feel like you have to save them yeah and I kind of was just like nope they said to do this so I'm just gonna do it Mm. and it I don't want to say it created tension but I was very much like my personality type I'm like 110 percent all the way or nothing and Mm -hmm. I just I literally just went with it and I did the work so did people like at that at the time you're working with other artists Mm -hmm. and what's scary about growth is all of a sudden you feel very isolated. Very. 
So talk to me about like you you felt like very alone. How did you just tunnel vision and like I'm sure they were like, who's this cold bitch? Like who does she think she, you know? Because they can't yeah. make the leap. And so I think what happens when people when you start growing at such a rapid rate, people are almost offended because they're like, well, why don't you like where, where we're at? Why mm -hmm. don't, why would you want to go anywhere else? You're they're offended like you said, like you're a piece of crap, but you're not. You're like, no, I just want to grow. Yeah, and for me, I mean, I always kind of push the limits, and I have a harsher personality, mm. so people do get a little offended sometimes, and I have to take a step back and just be like, hey, I'm really sorry about that. Like those you're weren't like, my intentions. Wrong. <laughs> yeah, and everyone was on board. Mm. I think five of us came out here together oh, cool. but only two or three of us were like for the academy mm -hmm. and that just shifted the trajectory of our um like friend group no of our careers like mm -hmm. where we wanted to focus things that was it but if I hadn't done the academy for myself mm -hmm. like my transition into a huge like metro city mm -hmm. would not have been be hard yeah oh my gosh this was actually like the best year yet in my career mm -hmm. and it revenue wise mm -hmm. and I was by myself in a studio brand wow. new city no clients like right convention was really discouraging for me mm. this last one yes why because I felt so small oh, okay like prior to I was like I had a chip on my shoulder and I was like you know what? Like when you were in the small town yeah I was like okay I'm the six-figure stylist yeah, yeah. like I'm doing all these things and then April we had convention. I had only had my salon open for four or five months. We mm -hmm. got married. So I wasn't really doing, you know, the hardcore things with the studio. And uh, convention, I was like, I just feel so small. Mm. And I'd never felt that way before. So it was very humbling for me. And yeah. it just gave me that push that I needed to, like, get Level my up. butt in gear. Yeah. And yeah. now I was talking about it earlier with one of the students, like, it's crazy to see what God can do in one mm. year. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Like this time last year, I was so defeated. Mm. I didn't know how I was going to start anything mm. in a new city, like mm -hmm. no friends, you mm -hmm. know, all the things in life were changing and it's crazy what he can do and what a little hard work can do. Yeah. I, th I think sometimes it's hard when you like kind of get in that funk and also mm -hmm. too, like it's like when there's no ceiling, right? Yeah. No. So you get to this place where you're like, okay, like I did it. And then like you said, you kind of like think you're all awesome and then you surround yourself <laughs> with people that are like a different level. Yeah. And you're like, sh like you said, it's humbling. You're like, for sure. Shit. You're kind of like, okay, well, there's a new ceiling. Yeah. Right. And so it kind of like lights a fire up uh, under your ass mm -hmm. in a way where you're like, okay, but it's very like inspirational too. It's scary. Yeah. But it's like, it's, it's like scary, but a fun place to be in. Absolutely. And I feel like when you've done that a few times, when you get that place where you kind of feel like I feel like the you feel like the small fish in a big pond. Oh, absolutely. It sucks, <laughs> but you're almost like excited because you know what's on the other side of it. Totally, so totally. Like, so how did you like knowing like so now where are you at? Like if you mm -hmm. you felt like that how long ago? Like you said in, in this last year, like so much changed. Like how did that change for you? Like because it's it's hard to go in a place where you feel very isolated and alone and then yeah. come out like on top. Honestly, you have to do the work. Mm -hmm. Like nobody's going to hand you clients. It's not just they're not just going to walk in the door, or right. fall in your lap. I at the time, like I remember y'all introduced counsel and mm -hmm. I was like, I have to do counsel. Mm -hmm. And then I looked at my numbers and I talked to my CFO and he's like, you can't do this. And mm -hmm. I was like, OK, well, I'm going to do what I can right. do. I'm not going to sit here and feel sorry for myself. Right. And I got a marketing manager. Mm. I got a CFO. I got all the things that I needed where I knew I was lacking. Right. And I did the work. Like, mm. the social media parts. Not just, like, yeah, post on Instagram. Yeah, yeah. That is, like, we've talked about this earlier. Like, that's just, when you say, like, I don't understand the algorithm. It's, it's called checklist posting. Dude. And it's such <laughs> an excuse, too. Yeah. Like, oh, Instagram's not going to bring you a full clientele. Right. You have to do the work in other areas. And marketing, like mm -hmm. being out in the community yeah. and doing like doing models. It's crazy that you're bringing all this up because I like in council, like in every all the trainings I did this year, it was crazy how everybody felt like 2023 was like slow. And I'm like, no, 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 no. Let's like, get this straight. <laughs> I'm like, what happened is you guys all got lazy. Did you just see my chair like bump down? <laughs> I did it. I didn't notice. I was like, you got real excited. I literally, there. it just like plopped down. I was like, okay, cool. Are we going to keep going or am I going to say something? <laughs> I didn't even notice. So you're good. That's Sorry. Funny. Okay. But, but meaning just like, I think what was working with social media and things like that, it was easy to get leads. <laughs> 
you're good. I was like, yeah, yes. it was my chair going to move? It, I'm like, do I need to sit still. Um, you got yeah. so amped up. I was just moved. so fired up about that. But yeah. t- like, t- talk to us about that because, like you said, you have to do the work. I think a lot mm-hmm. of people, when it was easy and they just could post and they'd get people, people got lazy. Yeah. And so, like, instead of, like, saying, oh, I don't have clients, you like you said, you go out into the community. Oh, it's yeah. not just about posting. It's intentional posting. Mm-hmm. It's... It's even writing email copy. It's like oh, doing man. everything. It's not, you can't everything. just post one photo and say, mm-hmm. pretty hair, don't care, book with me. Right. You know? And you also have to find your target market. Mm-hmm. I have a client. I know her name. She is my target market. Mm-hmm. So when I'm writing captions or I'm You're making speaking posts, I'm speaking directly to her mm-hmm. because those are the people I want to sit in my chair. Right. She will attract her friends. Right. And they'll come sit in my chair and... You have to search for those people. Mm -hmm. Like, I remember reaching out to Kiki, Mm -hmm. and I had asked her, like, okay, what can you look at my page and tell me what I'm doing wrong? Mm -hmm. She was like, it's not even your page. Like, you have to know. Yeah, yeah. and it's it's SEO. Mm -hmm. Like, that's the root behind all of this. So, like, get a website up. Get your blog going. All these things will trickle down. Yeah, Mm -hmm. and I began to do that consistently. And, Mm -hmm. like, the change that I saw in my business from just doing those things right. was insane. Well, it's crazy too, like you say SEO and things like that, but it's true. Like nobody, how often do you go to Instagram now and actually find people? It's so it's yeah. so hard to find people, but what do people always do? They Google. Mm-hmm. So hair extensions in Orange County, hair extensions, they'll even get more specific because with so much um, education on the marketplace and so much information, People are even, like, Googling very specific. Hand-tied hair, Orange County, blonde mm-hmm. expert, you know? Yeah. So the more that you can put stuff out there that people will actually find you, yeah. then that's how they're going to find you. It's so true. It's 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 So it's crazy. It's not. It's like the game is changing where people are just going to have to put conscious effort into mm-hmm. their marketing. For and sure. like you said, like, figure out, like, who is who is your target and then speak to them. Yeah. And I think, too, talk, talk, talk to me about, like, when you're speaking to, you know, like that potential client, I feel like authenticity sells. Mm-hmm. And it's not even that you're trying to be salesy. You are offering a product in which you believe in that you're mm-hmm. solving people's problems with. Yeah. So when you're, you know, doing your videos or your texts or you're posting or things like that, how do you show up kind of authentically as uh, you? You know, mm-hmm. you're like, I'm looking for this specific person, but what do you do to kind of talk to them? So my specific client is similar to me Mm -hmm. like we have a lot in common we Mm -hmm. have a lot to talk about we value the same things Mm -hmm. so I talk about those things the things that I value like I value taking care of my body getting up in the morning going to the gym Mm -hmm. those type of things I showcase that and how MBR works so easy with me Mm -hmm. going to the gym I just wake up and go you know Mm -hmm. those type of things and I am directing towards her she values the way she looks Mm -hmm. she values you know she values designer things. Yeah. She gets her Botox, right. you know, she wants her hair extensions. Yeah. And I target those things by being authentic well, so to me. You, you value yeah. yeah. And I don't make it in like a weird way. Mm-hmm. I just talk about it. Honestly, yeah. like I'm a talker. So mm-hmm. it's easy for me to be like, okay, guys, I just left the gym. Mm-hmm. Look at me, take out my twist. Yeah. And then that's that. Like, it, then people it works like, for itself. Well, and I, I try to tell people that too. Like when I was coaching in council this year and everyone's trying to find their avatar or who like their ideal client is. And I'm like, your ideal client is somebody who resonates with you. Yeah. So start sharing stuff that you're interested in, mm-hmm. that you're passionate about. Because yeah. if you start sharing that, people are like, she's so excited about this product. Like they, they want to buy whatever oh, it yeah, is. And for so sure. it's, I always tell people, I'm like, if you can just start kind of and I can tell you're a talker see I'm I'm somebody who has become and learned to be a talker mm-hmm. but I didn't ever when I first got on video and camera and things like that like pe- I was so awkward I was like let me re- I'm gonna read you the ingredients of this shampoo do you want to come do you want to come sit in my chair so I always tell people I'm like even if you're not a talker if you can just oh, show yeah. up and like be you and like show enthusiastic like be enthusiastic about whatever mm-hmm. it is then people are going to see that excitement in you as well. Absolutely. So did you have to do anything different with, you know, you know, you say do the work. Like, did you have to redo anything with your website? Did you start blogging? Give us some other tips. Give us the secrets. I went to some of our trainers' websites that I admired, that their aesthetic was the same. And um, I looked at how they verbalized things and Mm -hmm. how they talked. And 
I knew I wanted a luxury experience. Mm. I wanted to elevate my space because it's literally like a 10 by 11 room. Mm. I'm like, I got to make this worth it. Mm -hmm. So I did those specific things within my website, had people review it. I was not afraid of feedback. I'm Mm -hmm. like, listen, I can't have an ego right now. Mm -hmm. I got to get people through the door. Yeah, yeah, people in care. Yes. Mm -hmm. And my marketing manager helped me narrow down those things that were really hard for me, like, Mm -hmm oh, who's your target audience? I'm like, well, I don't freaking know. She wants hair extensions. Yeah, yeah. And then you you just have to narrow down those things. It's very specific. Like, it's okay to be specific. Yeah. Um, and I feel like with social media I ha- and blogging, I had to be really intentional Yeah. with what I was talking about. I can't talk about just like, this is why you need you have to MBR. care. Yeah, and you have to care. Like, yeah. what, are, what are you asking? What are your clients yeah. asking you? What When they come and sit in the chair... What are their concerns Questions. and their problems? Mm-hmm. You have to focus on the problem so that you can give them a the solution. solution. Yeah, that's it's it's funny because I love that you just said like I had to drop my ego a little bit. Oh, for sure. <laughs> it's what well, everybody does. Even I do. I'll be like, I'm such a great marketer, and then we just hired like a new website designer or developer, and mm-hmm. she's like telling me all this stuff, and I was like, I can have an ego about it and be like, No, I want it this way. Yeah. Or I can just be like, Okay, I can see why that's going to work, and I find that a lot of artists they. They're like, well, that's not my brand. Because like I said, I coach so many artists mm-hmm. where I'm like, I know this is like a piece of you, but let's elevate it. Yeah. Let's make it look luxury. I'm like, I don't care what town you live in. I'm like, but like you need to change your font. Like something yes. as simple as that. Oh my gosh, I'll it's be huge. Like, I'll be like, your font looks like toddler font. <sighs> and I, Or I'll be like, you're, I'm not trying to be like an asshole, but your lighting sucks. Yes. Nothing says luxury about this. I can't read your blog in cursive. Yeah. Like it's yeah. just not going to work. <laughs> I'm funny about fonts so. though. Oh, but, so but I funny. tell people because there's like the good artists, but then they have an ego about how they package oh, yeah. themselves up. And you're no. like, hey, like I, you can still be a good artist, but you have to be a certain way mm-hmm. to... to attract that type of client that's one thing that i love about our industry you never arrive Mm -hmm. like you're constantly learning and if you do feel as though you arrive you you're already behind yeah yeah because you have to constantly keep learning and i feel like 2023 for me was a year of learning i had to humble myself because Mm -hmm. i didn't have space for an ego i had Mm -hmm. no clients (laughs) who can i have an ego with i don't have any clients i don't care yeah so I had to humble myself and truly just be like, okay, I need help in Mm -hmm. any area that I can get. And I'm not going to be too proud to say that. It was with plenty of areas in my Mm -hmm. life. Like I was a newlywed. Like we're Mm -hmm. still newlyweds. I had no, I have no idea what a a healthy marriage looks like, a godly marriage. So we had to ask for help. Mm -hmm. My business, I had to ask for help. Like volunteering at Mm -hmm. my church, I had to ask for help and there's nothing wrong in asking for help either. Well, I just like love that you're touching base on that because I feel like so many people think, well, well, I've made it in life. And you're like, no, you made it to that ceiling. What's next? Yeah, and you got to go to the next ceiling. Yeah. And when you put yourself, you put yourself in a perfect situation to go to the next level because you're like, I've got to get clients. I'm Dude. new, like, you're kind of at this place. You're like, I have to. And it's interesting, you and like Julia Ward, same mm-hmm. thing, she moved to Arizona. <sighs> and love she's her. like, Danielle, like, I got to build a whole salon. I was like, Go get your ass out there and network. You yeah. know what to do. <laughs> it's uncomfortable. Yeah. You have to make yourself uncomfortable to yeah. grow. Yeah. And I don't think growth happens when you're comfortable. Yeah. It's like there's, impossible. There's always going to be seasons where you're like super uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. and But then at the end of it, you're like so proud. Oh, you absolutely. see the person that you yeah. have become. Okay. So you moved. Do you moved? How long have you had your salon? It November made a year. Oh, okay. So you, and are you fully like booked? How are you doing? Yeah. So I am 75% MBR. Um, My CFO says it needs to be less, but I'm like, listen, so he (laughs) thinks he literally, he thinks she'll make more money. No, I love him. He's great with numbers, but I'm like, excuse me, I want a full MBR clientele, but he's like, well, what about the economy? What if they can't afford it? What if they want a pixie cut? And I said, I guarantee you these women oh, no. will never want a oh, pixie they're, cut. They're, they're, they're a different price bracket. Like, they're a different it's breeds. A, it's a different, di- yeah, I always yes. say, it's like we're, we're in, during the pandemic, all of our clients were like, no, we still oh, want I know. our hair. I was like, <laughs> yes. really? They're like, we don't care if we don't have toilet paper, but yeah. hair? <laughs> no. I've had clients tell me, they're like, I don't even think... If I couldn't have it in my budget, like, I would live under a bridge before I didn't have my hair. And you, like, feel bad when they say that, but you're like, I girl, I get it. I had I had um, uh, clients that were like, hey, I put, like, money away, like, in this, literally, like, a jar yes. for my hair. I'm like, 
oh, I feel bad, but I love that you value it that much. So they're like, yes. I feel sexier. I'm a better mom. I'm a better wife. Like, Dude, this overall, matters to me. It is so important. Like, I feel like I show up better for those around mm-hmm. me when I feel good about myself. For sure. Not that I don't think my worth is in my hair, like, by all right. means. But I feel better as a woman. Mm-hmm. I feel better as, like... A business owner, yeah, you know, and especially if you're doing NBR and you're not wearing it, you have to go wear it, yeah, to I, feel it. I, I, I'm like very passionate about that as well. It's funny. I did one of my husband's clients, his wife, mm-hmm. last week, and his her husband like came up to me and was like, "Hey, thank you," and he started crying. He oh, started crying. Man, I love that. I know. I was like, "You're welcome." He's like, "No, like he's like my wife walked into the room and it wasn't even about her." Mm-hmm. It was how she carried herself. That's and I, crazy. And then I almost started crying. I was like, I "Isn't know. it so beautiful what we get yeah, to do?" It is. It's, it's awesome. And it's just, it's like all I showed her was who she's always been, mm-hmm. and now she feels it on the outside. And so she's got. I said, "So I guarantee she's going to close better. She's going to be a better mom, better wife." I was like, oh, "I yeah. know it's something silly like hair, but like you said, when you feel better, you carry yourself different and you operate different with others, which then in turn goes to." you have more reach and impact on Absolutely. others through hair. I'm such a firm believer in that. Yeah. Like, that's one of my stories that I tell, like, through mm-hmm. social media, because I experienced that. Like, we, this summer was just, like, so stressful for mm-hmm. us. Just life happens, and I chopped all my hair off. Like, my natural oh, hair was did. this long. <laughs> and yeah, I say, you look like you have good hair. It, I chopped it all off. I have pretty thick hair, yeah. naturally. So my story's like, hey, did you regret chopping your hair yeah. off like me? Like, yeah. come get three rows of 22s. Yeah. So I chopped it all off, and it, it was like a week. I was like, I'm cute. And then I was like, now I'm freaking ugly. <laughs> I need the hair. Like, I need the long hair. I always say short hair's cute. Like every, It's so cute. Every time I cut my hair, my husband says the same thing. It's cute. And I was yeah. like, I don't want to feel cute. I want to feel sexy. <laughs> yes. I'm like, I don't feel sexy. I don't feel like a woman. I feel cute. Yeah, I feel like, cute. You know, yeah. the shoulder shrug. Yeah. Cute. It's fun. It's fun, but it's like one of those things you regret. And yes. Then you have hair extensions. Yeah. So, so then... I traveled, yeah. got my hair done, got full done. experience. I love it. Yep. Well, I love hearing your story. I love your um, passion behind everything. You're like a great example of showing that if you do the work, anything is possible. Mm-hmm. And it, that there is no ceiling. No. And, and that there really is no excuses. Yeah. So I love that. It's like I can I can give you a tool, but I can't get that tool mm-hmm. to work for you. You've got to do it. Exactly. And a small town mindset like just because you're in a small town does not matter. Yeah. You can literally do whatever you want. I tell people, like, if they're self-conscious about wearing an outfit, I'm like, you could wear a paper bag yeah, if you all over your body. It, there, you, yeah. People are going to be lined up trying yeah. to get those bags at the grocery yeah, yeah, store Yeah, because you did it with confidence. Did, yeah, that reminds me of my daughter, Bailey. Half the shit she wears, <laughs> I'm like, what are, what are you wearing? No, that just, they're getting crazy. <laughs> yeah. they're, some of their outfits, I'm yeah. like, man. I'm like, are you are you wearing a bra with, like, boxers and, like, <laughs> boy sh- I don't even, like, but you look cute. Like, yeah, I don't know. They so. rock it. Oh my good, that's good for you. It's well, thanks for, thanks for being on the podcast today. I know it was kind of a quick one. And if you're yeah. back in town, like you were, you're fun to talk to. <laughs> yes, this. I so loved it. I love when I have like high energy people. It makes it like easy and fun and kind of light. And I thought I feel yeah. like you added a lot of value just sharing your story and what's Thank possible. Thank you. So you guys, if you are interested, well, give us your Instagram handle. Okay, my handle is Austin A U S T E N dot the Light Collective. Okay, That's so the name you, of my studio. So you heard how passionate she is about hair. So ladies, if you are resonating with her and you want your hair done, look her up on Instagram. Go stalk her page. If you're an artist and you love our message and you're like, what Kool-Aid did they drink? We're going to invite <laughs> you to come drink the Kool-Aid Please. with us. We'd love you to be a part of our community. I think that community is huge when you yeah. feel so alone. It's nice to have you know people going through a lot of the same stuff. Mm-hmm. So if you're interested in Naturally Rose Education, you can go to mbr.education to learn more. We have several programs. We have a shadowing program. We have the Academy, which is a full-blown business marketing sales, oh, uh, yeah. hair extensions, all the things. We have small classes. We got a lot of options this so year. Many options. So many and options. And mastermind after you become a licensed yes. artist. Well, I just was like, I don't. I selfishly don't want to let any of my students go. So I just creating. <laughs> I just keep creating more programs because I'm like, oh, you're gonna go take a program there? No, let me create a, a, a better one. Just yes. Keep it in the family. Look so. at ours over here. Yeah. <laughs> look, at, look, at, look at this shiny, sparkly thing. So, well, thank you so much for being here. Next thank you time for you're having in town, me. Let me know. I'll definitely love to have you on the podcast again. Me too. And you guys tune into another episode every single week. Share it with your friends. Uh, We release every Tuesday the Big Money Stylist podcast. Thank you so much for listening, and we'll see you next week. Peace. Bye.